With the market action for the day, weak global sentiment playing spoils spot as the stock markets came under pressure. So we saw the Sensex down over 600 points and the Nifty lost over 200 points. With this decline, all the gains that were made on Friday stand reversed. The Nifty Bank was the worst hit as financials led the decline. All sectoral indices ended in the red except for the pharma index. That's the equity market action and on to the currency market. The Indian rupee also weakened against the dollar today. In fact, the rupee weakened more than 50 pesos as the dollar gained strength in trade. One US dollar is now almost worth 82 rupees. A strong dollar has been rattling currencies around the world. The rupee though has performed relatively better compared to its peers. And here's another reason why the Lal Street may have come under pressure. Crude oil prices are rising once again. Both Brent and Limex are up over 4% as OPEC nations consider yet another cut to production. On Wednesday, OPEC will mull cutting output by a million barrels per day. And this is driving oil prices higher across the world. So this is going to be something to watch out for. But the big international story, just 24 hours ago, British Prime Minister Liz Truss said, and I quote, she's absolutely committed to the proposed tax cut. But today, a U-turn. The British government has reversed its decision to cut the topmost tax rate from 45% to 40%. And the move comes after widespread backlash and market turmoil. In fact, the International Monetary Fund had warned that the tax cuts will increase inequality. Arabel Gumid joins us now with more. Arabel, the tax cut reversal, uh, embarrassing for the government. Early this morning, we got word then that the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, that being the Finance Minister, uh, Kwasi Kwarteng, had decided to reverse his decision that he had set forth on uh, September the 23rd, which was to cancel and abolish, as he had put it, that upper tax rate uh, of 45%, which of course impacted the wealthy. Today, doing away with the abolishing of that uh, top tax bracket and instead saying that it had become a distraction to what he believes was still a great growth plan for the UK economy. Markets have stabilized somewhat on the back of that. We saw the pound early this morning uh, gain around seven-tenths of a percent. That strength perhaps weakening off just a little bit. We even saw uh, predictions on interest rates perhaps not set to hit that six percent mark and instead hit around 5.5 to 5.75. It doesn't take away of course that impact on the guilt market where the BOE, the Bank of England, has indeed intervened and said that they will throw around five billion pounds per day to uh, try and show up that guilt market so questions around stability still at the fore Arabel many thanks for joining us uh, that is the big story the u-turn by the UK government now shares of Swiss lender Credit Suisse plunging across global markets amidst rising concerns over its deteriorating financial health the stock tanked even after the CEO reassured clients and employees about Credit Suisse's liquidity and financial position the bank's credit default swap prices jumped to its highest level rising to 293 basis points from 55 basis points at the start of the year. Investors fear if there will be a repeat of the 2008 financial crisis. Leslie Picker is here with more. Leslie. The rumor mill kicked off in earnest with a report about a week and a half ago saying the firm was sounding out investors about a capital raise. That news, although disputed by sources close to the firm, sent the stock to a record low, and it's fallen almost every day since, now significantly lower than $4 a share. The firm sent out a press release a week ago saying it's on track with asset sales and divestitures, which would help raise cash without diluting shareholders. Uh, on Friday, CEO Ulrich Corner sent out an internal memo obtained by CNBC where he tried to comfort employees and, uh, amid a slumping stock price and, quote, uncertainty and speculation. He said, quote, I trust that you are not confusing our day to day stock price performance with the strong capital base and liquidity position of the bank. So is Credit Suisse having its Lehman moment? Well, Credit Suisse's common equity tier one ratio at the end of Q2 was 13.5 percent. That's higher than most U.S. banking peers. I'm told there's genuine interest in its securities pro securitized product unit, which could shore up some capital. However, the firm is still sitting on hundreds of millions of dollars in losses from leveraged buyout related debt that the market won't absorb amid this current risk off sentiment. And it's impossible from the outside to get a minute by minute account of the true picture of risk on its balance sheets. Leslie, appreciate you joining us. More global news. British Telecom major Vodafone PLC has confirmed that it is in discussion with Hutchison for a potential merger of Vodafone UK and 3UK. 
Vodafone will own 51% of the combined business, while CK Hutchison will own 49%. Vodafone is currently third in the pecking order in the UK, behind British Telecom and Virgin Mobile. Hutchison is the fourth largest operator in the UK, but a merger between Vodafone and Hutchison will create Britain's biggest mobile operator. So that's a proposed merger in the making, confirmed there by Vodafone. But of course, this is specific to the UK market. Celebrity influencer Kim Kardashian will pay $1.26 million to settle SEC allegations that she broke U.S. law by touting a crypto token without disclosing her earnings from the promotion. Kardashian has agreed to pay the penalty for promoting Ethereum Max on her Instagram page. In an interview with CNBC SEC chairman Gary Gensler and Kim said Kim Kardashian broke the law, but he refused to comment if other celebrities will face similar charges. If you were to see an ad, and I think we all did during the Super Bowl, for example, with Matt Damon around crypto, um, I don't know if in the fine print of that ad it said how much he was being paid personally to promote that. Would that be something that would be required? Uh, I, I'm not going to get into Andrew. I understand the question. I'm not going to get into any other specific circumstances, but it always depends on the facts and the circumstances. In this particular case, this is about an influencer, a high-profile celebrity, on their Instagram site putting out a tout for this token Ethereum Max, which is a security right. uh, we've determined. And so those are the facts and circumstances here. Well, that is the SEC chief there. And remember, even in India, the Consumer Affairs Ministry has now put out guidelines uh, that social media influencers will need to follow, which basically means the topmost priority will be to disclose any arrangement with a potential advertiser. So if you're advertising a brand, then you need to disclose whether you're being paid or not. And that is part of the guidelines that the Consumer Affairs Ministry has put up for circulation at this point in time. Process, the parent company of fintech major PayU, has scrapped its mega $4.7 billion acquisition of Buildesk, saying that certain conditions were not fulfilled. These conditions were to be fulfilled before the September 30th deadline, which was the long stop date. The deal would have been the second largest in India's internet economy and would have created the country's largest online payments entity. Shruti is here with more details. Shruti, a mega deal that was on the table, but now, no longer. Well, that's right. Process, the global investment arm of South African multinational NASPERS, has terminated its $4.7 billion deal to acquire Indian payments gateway firm Buildesk through its Indian subsidiary PayU Payments. Now, as per a statement issued by Process, and I quote, certain conditions precedent were not fulfilled by the 30 September 2022 long stop date, and the agreement has terminated automatically in accordance with its terms, and accordingly, the proposed transaction will not be implemented. Implemented, end of quote. Now, a quick background. The deal was announced by Process on August 31st, 2021. The acquisition was to be the country's second largest internet deal after Walmart acquired Flipkart in 2018. Now, it would have raised the company's total investment in India to $10 billion. The Competition Commission of India approved the deal on September 5th after weeks of delays and additional queries. Now, founded in 2000 by M.N. Srinivasu, Ajay Kaushal and Karthi Ganpati, Biltes focuses on making accepting and collecting payments. As per industry estimates, the Buildes enjoys a 25 to 30 percent market share in the online payment aggregator space, which is followed by Razorpay, which is at 15 to 20 percent. And PayU is the third largest player with a share of 10 to 15 percent. Shruti, many thanks for joining us. So that is the end of the PayU build this deal. India's factory growth slowed to a three-month low in September but remained in expansion territory. The S&P Global India Manufacturing PMI coming in at 55.1. The S&P report states that manufacturing PMI was in expansion for the 15th month in a row. A reading above 50 indicates expansion. Passenger vehicle makers have seen strong sales in September. M&M, Tata Motors and Maruti registering sales growth between 85 to 129 percent on a yearly basis. Two-wheeler exports, though under pressure, the farm equipment segment has witnessed a sharp improvement. Another fatal incident involving an electric vehicle fire. A seven-year-old boy died after an e-scooter exploded while charging in Vasai on the outskirts of Mumbai. The police say the battery was removed from the scooter for overnight charging and could have resulted in overheating and a short circuit, which led to an explosion. The e-scooter belonged to a company called 
Tat R E Electric Mobility. It's a Rajasthan-based entity. The big development from the privatization and asset monetization space, the union government will invite expressions of interest for IDBI Bank's privatization by the 15th of this month. That's not all. Hotel Ashok's monetization will come up for cabinet approval as well. Sapna Das joins us with more on both these exclusive stories. Sapna. Well, first of all, on IDBI Bank's stake sale, we are given to understand that the government will be definitely be in a position to invite the EUIs for the bank's stake sale by October 15. In fact, the expectation has been that they could be ready at least this week itself. Uh, however, if not this week, then by October 15, definitely the EUIs for IDBI Bank's stake sale will be in. That's one. Second, importantly enough on uh, Hotel Ashok, we are given to understand that maybe the government would be in a position to make a presentation to the core group of secretaries as far as the monetization plan is concerned. Once that is done, uh, the cabinet the work on the cabinet note will start, so maybe by around December or uh, November, December or uh, before the uh, calendar year ends, maybe the cabinet approval will be in for Hotel Ashok's monetization plan. Uh, you know, we are also given to understand that the number of entities has grown substantially. 22 odd entities were there earlier who had shown interest in Hotel Ashok's roadshow. Uh, we are given to understand the number now stands at 30 odd plus and it includes uh, big players like uh, ITC and HAT, uh, apart from the names which are already doing the rounds. Uh, but significantly enough, we're also given to understand that the timelines for completion of Hotel Ashok's monetization uh, are pretty, uh, you know, are pretty uh, tight in the sense that they will not be, uh, this monetization plan is not really going to uh, take off in a big way uh, till India's G20 presidency is over. Because at that point in time, India is going to require uh, all of its iconic hotels to be ready and available for uh, foreign dignitaries. So keeping all of this in mind, it just could be possible that the actual handover of the Hotel Ashok could start after the G20 presidency presidency is over sometime next year. This is what we are given to understand. But in the meanwhile, the government is going to keep all its entire plan ready in terms of not just a CGD presentation, but also in terms of the cabinet approval and what shape and form, uh, you know, this is going to uh, take place. Sapna, many thanks for joining us. Kirit Parikh, the head of the government appointed panel tasked with reviewing the pricing formula for domestic natural gas, told CNBC TV 18 exclusively that India may have to cut down on gas consumption if LNG prices see a sharp spike. He said the price of gas for fertilizer companies will be prioritized for allocation. Government hiked the prices of natural gas by 40% to a record high on Friday. Uh, many import of LNG taking place in the country is based on a long-term contract. And the pri average price of imports in India is, is, is substantially below what the spot prices in international market is. And obviously, if the international market prices go up, then we have to decrease the consumption of this, reduce the consumption of this. Because you cannot expect the government that is people uh, uh, the general public bears the cost of this price for few who use this gas. Chinese smartphone maker Xiaomi said it was disappointed with the competent authorities order allowing the enforcement directorate to freeze its assets worth over 5,500 crores. The company says that 84% of the amount seized was royalty payments to Qualcomm for tech without which their tech wouldn't work in India. The mobile manufacturer also maintained that all royalty payments were made through RBI approved channels. Here's another exclusive. The Customs Department is looking into tax evasion by some Indian companies for allegedly importing goods from China and not paying the applicable tax by allegedly misusing the FTA route. Sources say the Customs Department found these companies importing goods from China and gaming rules of origin norms, misusing the FTA route by importing via Southeast Asian countries. Credit card issuance has declined month on month for the first time in 14 months and this is largely attributed to RBI's new guidelines directing issuers to deactivate the cards that have remained inactive for a year. HDFC Bank continues to be the leader with the highest market share in spends over the last few months followed by Axis Bank. Amongst large players, ICICI Bank, SBI Cards and Indusind Bank have seen a decline in spends in market share. Time now for us to bring you a CNBC TV 18 special report. Horrors of invasion loom large over the Ukrainian town of Kharkiv. Our colleague Sanjay Suri visits the Kharkiv War Memorial, built in remembrance of those who laid down their lives to defend the city.